We just get warmed up. That's it. Hey. Y'all gonna have to do better than that. Turn it up for us. We all own the rights to this music. Hey.
We shall give you yes and amen. We thank you, Father, that in this season, God, we shall not move in darkness, but, Father, we shall live in the spirit of the light. God, we thank you that in this season, we shall be equipped, God, with the arsenal of the world. We thank you that in this season, we shall not be mediocre in our faith. That we thank you that in this season, we shall not be mediocre in our yes. We thank you, Father. We thank you that we shall not be mediocre in how we see you. We thank you, God, that we shall not be mediocre in how we serve you. We thank you that we shall not be mediocre in how we're moving in this season. We thank you that in this season we shall give you yes. We thank you in this season we shall seal it with amen. We thank you that in this season we will not be held back, set back. We thank you that in this season we shall be set up for our good. We thank you that in this season we shall move in the anointing. We thank you that in this season we shall move in power. We thank you that in this season we shall tread on the head of the enemy. We thank you that we shall move in our best. We thank you that we shall have arsenal of prayer. We thank you that the enemy cannot set us up, Father. We thank you, God, that in this season we shall get what is owed and due unto us. So we shall give you what is due unto you. We thank you that in this season we shall tear down strongholds, break generational curses. We thank you that in this season we shall get our faith back in order. We thank you that we shall be unmovable and unshakable. We thank you that we shall not break but we may be. We thank you that we shall have the joy of the Lord in our heart. We thank you that we shall have peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you that we shall give our children the word of God. We thank you that we shall move in power in the hour. We thank you, God. There's no way we can be mediocre and be connected to you. There's no way, Father. That we shall bring the power back into the building. But in order for us to bring the power into the physical building, we got to build the power in the temple. And God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. So break every stronghold off the believer today. That God, some have been dealing, dealing with doubt and anxiety. Some have not heard from you in a long while. And God, we are asking you today to do something supernatural, unusual, Father. Something extraordinary, God. Something that ain't common, Father, that we can only get from you. So we thank you. So have your way. Hide me behind your cross. Blow breath over my words, Father. Stand hard in these heels. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Move how you want to move. Heal, God, who you want to heal. Allow the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the paralytic to walk. Have your way. Allow the believer to. Hey, Allow their hearts to be ready to receive your word. That so we can sow it on good ground. Then, Father, as we leave the building, Father, we see a shift that happens in the spirit. So have your way. I pray for those that are online, Father, that you shall bless them, God. And God, it gets real good to them that they start to come back in the building. That God, that it gets real good to them that they got to be in fellowship with other believers. That it gets real good to them, Father, that they got to pay their respect unto you, Father, and travel just a little bit to give you what they got. God, that it gets so good to them, Father. And that I see it. Let it get good to them. So God, have your way. 
I thank you for getting me back safely, Father. In such a short period of time, I thank you, God. Oh, God, don't allow us to take your covering lightly, Father. But allow us, God, to be thankful and grateful for who you are. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. And all that agree, give God your highest praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so. And amen. amen. Bless your name, God. The children and the young folks are dismissed. Who was that? Is that Skyler? Bring her up here. All right, y'all young people are dismissed with the fashionable elder Joyce. Ha! We see you, baby. And if the rest of you all, y'all can go ahead. There you go. Be nice to her now. She is anointed. There you go. You too. Bless your name, God. We will be in the book of Jude. If you can stand for the reading of the word. Bless your name, God. Help you out. It's in the back of the Bible. Hey, it's one chapter. J U D E. It's all right. Jude. Bless your name, Jesus. Jude, the first chapter, beginning at verse one. It says, Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. To those who are called sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Verse 3, Beloved, while I am very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I find it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly man, who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though, that you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these have given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example suffering vengeance uh, of eternal fire. We're almost done. Verse 8. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in the contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not to bring uh, against him a, re a reviving a, a accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speaking evil of whatever they do not know and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and have run greatly in the era of Balaam for profit and perish in the rebellion of Korah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be so worldly connected that you're spiritually dead. Don't be so worldly connected that you're spiritually dead. In this text, we find Jesus' half-brother, 
addressing the church as a bond servant of the Lord. Now, I know many of you are thinking, how is he the half-brother of Jesus? Well, I'm glad that you asked. He was the son of Joseph and Mary, and Jesus was the son of Mary and God. Catch that. Uh, Jude was the half-brother of Jesus because his mother and daddy was Joseph and Mary, and Jesus' mama and daddy was Mary and God. And so he was a half-brother. What is even more interesting about Jude is that he introduced himself as a bondservant of Jesus Christ. Now, many probably would have introduced themselves as Jesus' brother to ride that anointing coattail. However, Jude understood and respected the mantle on his brother's life. He made it clear that his servitude was much more greater than his brotherhood. Yeah. I'll say it again. He made it very clear in his actions, in his conversation, that his servitude unto the Lord Jesus Christ was much more important and greater than his brotherhood. Yeah. Jude exemplified his humility unto Jesus rather than his earthly relationship. My God, he exemplified his humility, his humbleness, his respect unto the Lord rather than his earthly relationship. Now if you don't mind, I'd like to slow walk this text and park these heels so that we can understand and unpack this word that God is giving to us. Jude understood the spiritual mantle versus the worldly connection. Who am I talking to? He understood the Jesus Christ versus the worldly connection. Come on, come on. I'm trying to help someone today. You need to stop entertaining people who lack spiritual understanding of who God has called you to be and align yourself with spirit-filled folks who don't question or mishandle the relationship of who you are. Who am I talking to today? spiritually intellectual a smart so you don't entertain people that don't understand the mantle that's on your life that's why it's so easy for people to tell stories about who you used to be because they had no insight to who you are today they can talk about how you used to cut up how you used to drink and how you used to do this and that but see what they fail to realize from a spiritual perspective that Help y'all. Jew understood 
God, the spiritual mantle on his brother's life versus the worldly connection. He understood that there was no way that he could be connected to someone of that great destitute without respecting them. And God is trying to tell y'all this morning, y'all got to stop trying to connect to common people that don't and cannot smith the anointing that is on your life. God said, stop being desperate in this season that you're comfortable being friends with Judas. Who am I talking to? We so desperate to have a friend that we just okay with Judas. Uh, uh, we don't ignore the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit telling you that Judas ain't got your best interest. Judas don't care nothing about you, but we become so common minded that we ignore the Holy Spirit. Ain't no way I'm going to continue to entertain common people that don't understand my spiritual connection. I Preach, Pastor. Uh, I don't mind if I do. Uh, uh, so God is saying, we got to stop entertaining people who lack spiritual understanding. Because when they lack spiritual understanding, they lack the things that you got to do in your life. And so you spend time and waste time that don't make you no money and don't make no sense. That math ain't math. And you try to convince them what God is calling and ushering you into. And God says, baby, if you read the side effects, that they ain't got no spiritual intellect. So why are you wasting your time? So why, why, why is this important? It's important because if people understood your mantle on your life, they would approach speak to you and treat you in a better way. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. They would approach you properly, speak to you properly, come on, and treat you better than what the world would tell you. Uh, you know when people, I was taught, it's yes ma'am and no sir and yes sir. But we're living in a generation where there ain't no respect there no more. Which is why we tell me God and Holy Spirit telling me that we're spiritually dead. Uh, uh, I was sitting trying to get off this plane and the mother that was sitting next to me, she said, baby, why are you up there getting my bag too? I said, yes, ma'am. And, and I grabbed it down and handed it to her because I seen the God that was on her. See, when you walk in humility, uh, you ain't so up on your own self that you can't recognize the anointing on somebody else. Who am I talking Jude was connected to Jesus, but he understood the anointing on Jesus' life. <laughs> uh, see, Jude could have pumped his chest up uh, to think he was on the same level as his brother. However, he knew in the spirit that Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, he knew there was something special about Jesus. He knew uh, that this was not an ordinary connection. However, it was extraordinary. And see, that's why in the temperature we're in today that people mishandle relationships because there's no spiritual intellect. So they mishandle why you are in their life. They mishandle why God has made the divine connection. They mishandle it. And then when you decide what your smart self to go about your business and then they remember. Yeah, my God. My God. And God is saying that we're in a season that if we don't get spiritually intellectual, we're going to miss our own blessings. Uh, uh, if I don't get spiritually intellectual of the Holy Spirit, of operating in the Spirit, in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy Spirit. And many of us have been dysfunctionally operating in God the Father and the Son. We think it only takes us just giving our life to him. It's all that it takes. However, God is saying that in order for you to operate in the season, you got to operate in the Trinity. Because baby, where you're going, you're going to need the comforter to tell you where to go, what to do, and what to say. But many of us... Come on, come on. <laughs> 
We've gotten comfortable with our world's worldly intellect. We have been taught uh, get connected to so and so because they got something to offer and we will turn down the anointing. Uh, we got so worldly connected that I'm going to be nice to Katrina because she can give me something versus being nice to Katrina because she's connected to the heavens. Uh, we got so worldly connected that we will turn down mother's anointing because she ain't driving a fancy car. She ain't wearing the latest designer. So of course she can't give us nothing. But God is saying, I want to get the believer to be spiritually intellectual that they can smell the anointing. That I don't know mother, but I would rather sit in the same row as mother. I know there's something about mother that I've got to be close to. I know that if I'm just in the presence of the Lord, that everything in my life is going to begin to turn itself around. I know as long as I'm in the same vein as mother, that everything will begin to make sense. Who am I talking to? designer. I've seen on the internet this lady said that she followed this influencer and she said the sister she was a bad sister. She had on the latest designer and she was always at the finest restaurants taking the best pictures carrying the best handbags and she said I need her at my conference because she got there. She gonna influence the people and she said she called the woman up and she said I need you to be at my conference because that's something about on the internet and then the lady said well right now I'm homeless and I don't know where I'm going to be when they get to your conference but I got to figure it out and she said she was just baffled and God said she was not biblical because the biblical text will tell you by the Holy Spirit and the anointing that that woman was not connected but because she seen with her eyesight come on and not in the spirit that's what she was desiring then she said two seconds after she got off the phone with that lady she said huh, that that lady post another picture with her Chanel bag how did I see it in front of a restaurant now how are you homeless and that's the first thing you're thinking about uh, I know you ain't biblically connected because if I'm homeless and I ain't got nowhere to lay my head with my pretty little self, I ain't worried about trying to entertain y'all. I got to figure out whatever can I say. The only way you see me uh, posting a handbag because I'm selling it. I'm selling this girl for $3,000 because I got Spirit is sent here to build your mind up. So baby, you can tell your story. 
I'm not gonna sing. So you got to get spiritually connected, uh, spiritually uh, intellectual. Uh, uh, so you ain't going alone to just get alone. Uh, I, you, I just told somebody the other day, I disagree with you. That math, baby, ain't math. But you gonna do what you need to do. And I'm gonna stand over here where I know where I can find it in the scripture. I know that God is talking to me. So it's important to understand the mantle on your life. It's important for you to be connected to the right people. So they can approach and speak to you and treat you better. Uh, see, Jude understood that about his brother Jesus. He understood that there was an extraordinary connection. And God is even reminding us is that when we understand and study who he is, uh, we will treat him a little bit better. We will approach him a little bit better. You ain't going to God because you're hungry in the natural. You're going to God because you're hungry in the supernatural. If you knew the God that you serve, and if you believe that he parted the Red Sea, then maybe he can take care of your issue from last week and your issue that's today. If you knew the God that you serve and how David was able to fight Goliath, if you knew the God that you serve and how Daniel did not bow down to the king, if you knew the God that you served, you would approach your life a little bit differently. You, you can't expect nobody to approach you differently. If you ain't approaching your life differently, uh, if you don't know your worth, they ain't going to see and understand your worth. Uh, if you don't know your worth, they ain't going to approach you properly. If you don't look the part, dress the part, and be the part, and live the part, they ain't going to do that themselves. Come on here. Come on here. You break it. Out of my So... He knew that there was an extraordinary connection. And God says, do you know there's an extraordinary connection? <laughs> Jude knew he could not approach the things or the people of God in any type of way. He could not represent Christ in any type of way. Jude knew the sensitivity and timing that he was in, which is why he had to address and approach the church with a sense of urgency. It says that Jude wrote a letter to the church. And if you see in the text, it says uh, uh, in, in verse it says uh, it says in verse uh, 3, Beloved, while I'm very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I find it necessary to write uh, to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which once was for all delivered to the saints. Yeah. Verse 4, for certain men have crept unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. God says there are certain people that have crept unnoticed in your life. Come on here. Come on here. That ain't for the right things. But because you're so worldly minded, you ain't spiritually listening. Who am I talking to? My Lord. It's going unnoticed that you're entertaining so many Judases in your life. It's going unnoticed. Why you feeling like hell is always creeping up on your door? Or oh, baby, you're setting a table uh, for your enemies and you're asking them to come eat at the table. And God is saying, we got to get ourselves back spiritually. My God, my God, my God. He addressed the church in three ways. The first way he addressed the church to remind them that they were called by God. Uh, somebody put that in the comments. He addressed the church. He was reminding the church. He was reminding us that we were called by God. Yeah. See, many of you are moving with an earthly mantle. Uh -huh. When you know who you are, you move in who you are. And, uh, and, and you know how to move in who you are and stay away from things that don't align up with who you are. Come on, come on. Who am I talking to? 
to. You want to go down the 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 uh, uh, the juke joint? Do I look like juke joint material? Come on, come on, baby. If it ain't five star, I don't want it. If it ain't Bravo's house with it's all the fixes, I don't want it. Yeah, that's it. Ain't no way I'm gonna build myself up spiritually to go sit in bondage. Who am I talking to? But ain't no way I'm gonna build up my prayer life. Ain't no way I'm gonna build up my mind to go sit somewhere in a trash can. Uh, she just bougie, baby, call it what you want. But the way my life is set up, the way my mantle is set up, the way my journey is going, I just can't be connected to anything. The world has taught us that in order to move in who we are, we have to show receipts, i.e. materialistic things. However, when you know who you are and you're moving in the anointing, you ain't got to convince and don't have time to convince anybody of anything. When he has called you to do a certain thing, he has connected you to do that thing. I know the mantle that's on my life, so I have to move with a sense of urgency. God has not called me to be in the sales industry. Catch that. Some of y'all try to be sales representative, and that ain't your ministry. Stop trying to sell somebody who you are. Stop trying to convince somebody who you are. Stop trying to convince them what God has taken you. Baby, you ain't in the sales industry. You, God has called you to be much greater than that. Not knocking somebody that's in that, but when you ain't supposed to be in that about your own life, God has said, I got to deliver you out of that thing. You're not in the sales industry. I ain't called to convince you that God called me to be a pastor. I ain't called, I ain't called to convince you that I'm somebody important in my marketplace. I've not been called to do that. Come on, yeah. I've been called to hold on yeah, that I speak yeah, my God. to the word of God. Yes, my God. You've been spending time acting happy, being fake, and disturbed in the spirit. You are holding on to people and things that do not represent the God in you or on your life. Okay, God is saying that we got to stay focused. Jude wrote the letter to the church reminding the people that they were called and commissioned. When you know that you are called and commissioned, you move in a sense of urgency and order. Who am I talking to? We ain't got that much time to live on this earth. So I ain't got time to waste on this earth. I got to move with a sense of commission so he addressed the church by number one reminding the church that they were called mm -hmm. the second thing he did was he addressed the church by reminding them that they were sanctified by God uh -huh. this means that they were set apart for God's purpose God reminded us last week that we are a part of the one percent uh, a population who is meant to serve him in a way that is honoring and glorifying him in our own lives unfortunately many believers have become so accustomed with sitting amongst the people uh, that they become common themselves to be sanctified by God means that you have to live your life according to and designed by God turn it around so my butt ain't that way uh, to be sanctified by and function in the vein of God. God has sanctified and designed you to be you. He has designed you to complete the purpose with the measurements from heaven. Catch that. God has designed you to be you with the measurements of Jeremiah 29 11 from heaven. But the problem is we start adding to the measurements. Uh, well, I need a, a, a little bit of this I need a little, and God says, I, I didn't add that to you because I don't want you to be a copycat. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so, as you are climbing on the ladder, I got to see <laughs> And see, y'all got to stop taking on these worldly things. I'm going to climb up the ladder and I'm going to bring everybody. Yeah, and so, as you, you get, you get yourself up the ladder. I got to see I ain't going to fall, baby. I'm in the anointing. Uh, when you call, climb yourself up the ladder, you can see better and differently amongst the rest of them. Uh, but see, many of y'all can't get up here and see what's ahead of you because you're so busy. Come over here now. Come on over here. You're so busy now. Come on. Come on over here. Uh, okay. All right. Hold on, 
just doing? Because you're busy. Uh, let me say right there. Uh, see, look. And now they ain't even in sheep. See, y'all trying to take people out of sheep. They ain't in sheep in your life to a whole nother level that God ain't called them to. Stop going to God in prayer and pray about these broken relationships that ain't supposed to go up the ladder with you. Stop going to God talking about they hurt me yet again. He tried to show you the first time. He tried to show you the second time. He tried to show you the third time. And you still trying to hold on. in my 
my name in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. So Holy Spirit has been sent to us to act on behalf of the Trinity. He sees what we don't see. He knows what we don't know. His ways are greater than our ways. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. So God has sent me here today to remind you that when you know the world tells us it was shot in my stomach. Baby, that is the Holy Spirit. It ain't something. Acknowledge Holy Spirit. If you were to listen to Holy Spirit, you went in and say all them bad relationships. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got a dream? You got a dream. I get mad at these daddies. I don't like to hear them. Well, baby, you didn't listen to the Holy Spirit, so who the dumb one? <laughs> Be dumb. Yes. Yes. That's the truth. So Holy Spirit is saying, stop, stop. Well, I'm saying stop being dumb. But Holy Spirit is saying, uh, the Holy Spirit rest in him. Rest in the Holy Spirit. Well, how do I know Holy Spirit? Well, there's an unctioning that happens in the Spirit. An unctioning that takes place that you can't rest until you proceed in that thing. Something told me this. Holy Spirit is not a something. He's Holy Spirit. That's it, Mother. God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. First Corinthians two and ten. I'm getting ready to close out. How did I see it? It says, "For God has unveiled them and revealed to them to us through Holy Spirit. For the Spirit teaches all things diligently, even sounding and measuring the profound depths of God." The divine counsels and things far beyond human understanding. For what person knows the thoughts and the motives of a man except the man's spirit within him? So also no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So we have to stop trying to convince ourselves and start to align ourselves in the spirit of God. And when you are aligned in the spirit of God, you don't go for anything and you ain't sitting amongst everybody. When you are in the spirit of God, you don't miss the move of God. When you are in the spirit of God, you can surrender to the direction of God. When you are in the spirit of God, you're in the comfort of God, the covering of God, the anointing of God, and the power of God. I don't hate you, Judas, but I just can't sit and have dinner with you. I can turn the other cheek. I can say honestly to Judas that no, we don't have nothing in common. It don't say. Other than we love one and hate the other. I love God and hate your, your, your devil. When you are operating in the spirit, God can show you the things of the world. And so Jude was sent and wrote a letter to the people of God. Because he had to remind him them of the three points. That they were called. That they were preserved themselves in the spirit. Come on. And they were to sanctify themselves and set themselves apart. Your journey that God has for you is just for that. For you. Your journey is not for you to bring people along that you didn't even ask God about. And then get upset and cry to God because they hurt you. And then get out on Facebook talking about. Oh, God, God is my bitch, baby. You didn't use God to break the men, so don't try to use God to correct them. So God is saying, don't be so worldly connected, huh? That you're spiritually dead. Give God a head clap right now, huh? How did I see it? Uh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Father God, I pray right now, please stand for the people of God, Father. But in the season, God, that they will not be that spiritually, uh, worldly connected that they're spiritually dead. I pray for that individual today, Father, that either A needs to give their life unto you, Father, or B needs to commit themselves to the church. Father, if there's an individual online or in person that says, Father, I thought I was connected, but I need to reconnect. 
Well, Father, I ain't been connected, so I need to connect. If that is you, just repeat yourself after me. Father God, I repent. I welcome you in my life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And on the third day, you raised him with your dunamis power. And Father, I will allow you to reside in every part of my life. If you just said that, you've just given your life to Christ. I rededicated your life to Christ. The second thing you need to do is get yourself in a biblical-based church. Y'all got to quit saying you're going to church to get what you need. Get what you, you need. It better be what you need and not what you want. Because I may want apple pie today and pumpkin pie tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Well, I know I need broccoli. Come on, somebody. Come on, I need some vegetables. You better stop getting what you want and go and sit under some anointing and get what you need to fight the battles, to stand in the glory of God, and to move in the faith of God. So get yourself to a church that you get. God, we pray for the people of God today, Father, that you shall bless them today. That, Father, that they will stop being salesmen and saleswomen in the spirit. But, Father God, that you will build them biblically, Father, so they can move in the anointing. I decree and declare that every person that's under my voice, that, Father, that their greater will be better. I thank you, God, that they shall not lack anything in this season. I thank you, Father, God, that whatever is coming up against them, whatever hell is knocking on their door, whatever demon that's hanging around their life, that, Father, you will expose the wolf in sheep clothing, Father. You will allow the anointing to reign all over them, Father. And you will allow the Holy Spirit to speak loud. Don't allow us to be hostile in the spirit, Father. Will allow us to be connected in the vein like never before. So, God, open our ear gates, our eye gates, Father, and our spiritual gates, God. And allow us, God, to receive all parts of you. And God, I thank you. I pray for the children, grandchildren, God, children, nieces, and nephews, God, and their extended family. That in this, season, in this season, we shall be biblically intellectual, Father. That we have some worldly sense, but we are biblically bonded, Father. And we thank you, Father, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We will transition over to tithes and offering. And I see it. If you believed in the word and received the word, dig deep. If you only got a, pe a penny, baby, be bold and drop that penny in there. How did I see it? How did I see it? There are multiple ways that you can give. The first way is through the cash app. And it's the dollar sign chosen ministries. The second way is the simple give app and it's chosen ministries. The third way is that you can text uh, the word give, G-I-V-E, to 513-790-4446. Again, 513-790-4446 and type the word give. You can also give through the Venmo app at chosen hyphen ministries. And lastly, you can mail a strong check to 30 Triangle Park Drive, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45246. Once you have your giving and your offer in Hickles at ICA, please stand. Hey, I see you. In the name of Jesus, God is good. This tells somebody we go home, baby. I had to quit that sales marketing job. <laughs> I was up there selling insurance, child. I don't hear you too. Once she got your offering in your hand, please stand. Hit it upside down. And say, freely I sow. And by faith, I watch God make my harvest grow. Come tap the basket or uh, put something in the basket. Uh, 
as you all know, that we have the uh, group therapy sessions uh, beginning October the 29th is the first one from 12 to 2. The second one is in November, and Elder J will get that information out to you. Uh, we need at least 10 people to sign up. Uh, and it may not be for you, it may be for your family member that keeps calling and texting you. So you may need to get some best practices for the holidays, because y'all know folks try to work us during Thanksgiving. So make sure you sign up. It will be at the church. We will have some uh, refreshments here as well. Uh, but I need folks to sign up so we can properly plan for uh, this group therapy. And again, it's not to go deep, but it's to really um, surface level some things that we need to deal with. Or some things that we may be doing and we don't know. Amen. Uh, the second thing is, as I told you all by the Holy Spirit, is that we need to go to the doctor. Use y'all insurance. Amen. Make sure you know what's going on because a time is coming that is going to be unnormal, unusual. And we have already gotten what we needed to get. Uh, as you all know, you can also go to the urgent cares as well. Uh, uh, Minister Jamie's urgent care, the, uh, the card is over there. There's uh, some other urgent cares as well. Get to the doctor, y'all. So we run up these credit cards to buy a little boo-boo in them something. Get your teeth fixed, get your new pair of glasses so you can see, get your hearing aid, get your back fixed, get your, your blood pressure, your diabetes med. Do what y'all supposed to do. These kids got enough. Amen. Amen. Y'all know for the month of December we're paying off debt. Uh, and we're going we're not gonna cross into the new year with debt and being overweight. Amen. So we're gonna go on our fast. Don't be telling me that you going to somebody's christening and you doing this and mama make pound cake. Baby, go ahead and just go on the fast and get yourself prepared. Give God a hand clap right now. Ain't God good? He's good all the time. All right, good people, I love you all. Continue to pray for uh, Cameron and her family. And a hand clap for those visitors that came. Thank y'all. Come back. Uh, we love you all, and y'all all be blessed. Before you all leave, Pastor, I know you're tired. So have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. I want to have, let her have a seat. And then we will stand. I want everybody to stand. There is a... Um, it's clergy appreciation month, according to man, but we all know that uh, clergy appreciation month should be every month. Yeah. We are here, some of you are members, some of you are visitors, but know that there is a divine connection to this woman of God. Yeah. That's all I can tell you, there's a divine connection. God sent you here again as, as a member. Some of you have been here, you haven't joined yet. Talk to God because there's a divine connection with this woman of God. It may just be a season, but no, there's a divine connection. So while you all are standing, some of you who got here on time, you should have a fan in front of you. So if you can get your fan, get your fan and turn it around facing pastor. Some of y'all may come on y'all get over here. Let's spread this out so she can sit. RP, you don't have a fan? Oh, uh, mother don't have a fan. Uh, now, now we only make 15. Now, we, we never know who all gonna be there. But turn it around. Uh, she turn it around. These are pictures of pastor. Uh, uh, some special occasions, and then some. Sometimes when she's uh, out celebrating with her husband and just being a, a, a woman, a wife. A mother. So, Pastor, come on up here. We, we, again, this is a small token of our appreciation and, and thankfulness for who you are in our life, how grateful we are, and how we do realize that this is a divine connection. So, thank you all, all for coming. So, at, at the count of three, we're going to say, Pastor, we love you. One, two, three. Now, scream like you're at the Bengals game now. Hey! 